Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, as you can probably judge by the title, that uh, I'm going to be showing you some very important features which I have made uh, videos on uh, in bits and pieces, but in this video, I'm just going to group them together and uh, I'm going to be solving some example questions, uh, checking basically, checking answers of some questions of past papers using um, these, these methods that are available in the calculator. So, Basically, you can use your calculator to solve simultaneous equations, you can use your calculator to solve quadratic equations and inequalities, cubic equations, you can use your calculator to find dy by dx at a given value of x, you can use it to also do integration within limits, and there's a table feature which I recently made a video on, which you can use to sketch graphs. So yeah, if you're, uh, if you're new here, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to share this video and like it. Uh, and share it with your friends, classmates, and whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. So let's get straight into it. Let's see. And we're going to be using this, remember, to check our answer, okay? So that we can be absolutely sure that whatever question it is, we've done it 100% correctly. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up is simultaneous equations, okay? Now, it's very likely that uh, you may come across simultaneous equations in polynomials. It's very likely that you may come across simultaneous equations in uh, cubic equations, vectors, okay? So simultaneous equations keep popping up basically everywhere, okay? So... This is one thing that you can and should uh, use your calculator to check your answer. Now remember, I'm going to be keep on emphasizing on the word check. We're only going to use it to check our answer. So this equation, these two equations we will solve the way they're meant to be solved. Okay, elimination or substitution. But the only reason why I'm using my calculator is to make sure that I can check my answer and make sure that my answer is correct, basically. Okay, so we press menu. Let's do that from the beginning. We press menu. We navigate to where we see equation. Okay, so for that, we need to press A. It's simultaneous equation, so we press 1. How many unknowns do we have? We have two unknowns, we press 2. Okay, then we're going to need to enter the values, and we're going to be very careful when entering values. So the first is the coefficient of x, which in this case is a, and then the coefficient of y, which in this case is b. Okay, so 1 is the coefficient of x, 1 is also the coefficient of y, and the constant, the value that we have after the equals to sign is minus 24. Then you have 1 again, and then plus 4, sorry, not minus, okay and that is minus 15 okay so you press equals to you press equals to again and now you have the value of a which is equal to minus 27 you press it again you have the value of b okay now, like i said x in this case is representing a and y is representing b okay so that's it you have your answer you can check and make sure that you've done it correctly and move on so next up is quadratic equation. As you know, you can use your calculator to check uh, your answer to quadratic equations also. So the equation that we've ended up with this, you can see that I've written the answer over here, but I wanna be sure before I move on to the next question. So what I do is I press one, I enter into a, the board equation again. And this time, since it's a polynomial, it's a second degree polynomial, so I press two. So like I said, second degree, so we press two for that again. So coefficient of x squared, which in this case is a squared is 10. And then the coefficient of x, which in this case is a, is minus 17. Then the constant is 3. Press equals to, press equals to again. Wait for the magic. You can see that a is equals to 3 upon 2. Press it again. And you can see that a is equals to 1 upon 5. So that means I've done it correctly. And uh, I can move on knowing that my answer is correct. Okay. Next is quadratic inequality, very important. And quadratic inequality, sadly, is only available in this calculator, in a class-based calculator, okay? So if you don't have one of these, it's okay, nothing to worry about. You can still use the rest of the functions, okay? So for inequality, so let's do that again. Uh, let's go back to normal, press menu, and let's head over to inequality. And this, you can see, is at B. So we're gonna press B to enter into inequality. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to enter what degree inequality we're talking about. So we're talking about degree number two. Okay. Now over here, you have to be very careful because this is what we're going to be using to solve. So you can see it's x squared plus 18x plus 45 greater than zero. Okay. So where do we have greater than zero? It's at the very first one. So first option, coefficient of x squared is one. Coefficient of x is minus 18. The constant is 45. Press equals to again. You can see that you have your value. One is that x is basically greater than uh, 15 and x is less than 3. Okay, so we can see here that I've basically messed up my answer. Okay, and what this tells me, this tells me that I need to make a correction and this is basically not 5. This is 15. You can see that I've worked it correctly up until here, but I've messed it up over here. So this is going to help me do that correction. Okay, so that's fixed. And yeah, by the way, if you were thinking that this was planned, this was not planned, I've just realized that I made an error. Anyway, 
Uh, now you have cubic equations again also very useful so you press menu you head over to equation that's a you go to polynomial and since this is a third degree uh, polynomial so we press 3 now coefficient of x cube is 4 the coefficient of x square is 8 coefficient of x is minus 9 and then the constant minus 18 press equals to again wait for the magic so x is equals to 3 upon 2 now remember I'm just I'm writing the answers over here but that does not mean that in the exam you're just going to write down the answer and not show the working you still have to show the working if you don't show the working you're not going to get any um uh, marks okay and in fact you can see in this question the examiner says here that do not use a calculator in this question it's written in bold letters so that means solution straight away from your calculator will not be accepted however you can still you know sneak peek and check your answer make sure it's correct okay now this is actually one of my favorite okay it's dy but you can actually find out the differential of any function at a given value of x okay so it says find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 10 at the point where x is equals to 1 so that means we need to find out dy by dx at x is equals to 1 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first of all go back to normal okay then press this key but before that make sure to press shift okay so if you press shift and then if you press this key you can see that you have something like this now remember to put the pre-differentiated equation the equation of the curve okay so that's exactly what i'm going to do x cube okay minus 6 x square okay plus 3 x and then finally plus 10 make sure that you've entered it correctly x cubed minus x x square plus 3x plus 10 and then press the rightwards key and enter the value of x at which you wish to find the gradient so that's one in this case so you press one and you can see that the gradient is equal to what is equal to minus six okay so that was number five number six is integration within limits again also my personal favorite now with the, this has a catch this particular question because we're supposed to find the exact value now it's very likely that a calculator will not give the exact value so what we can do is we can compare our value with the exact value and see if the decimals match or not okay so integrate what do we need to again you don't need to integrate it yourself your calculator will do the integration for you so open the bracket write x plus one bracket close square it move over to the deno i mean move down to the denominator write x square write down press the downwards key it will take you to the lower limit press the upwards key it will take you to the upper limit which is four and press the equals to sign so we have our answer which by the way if we write it like this it's going to be marked incorrectly but what we can do is we can check this with the exact value we get whatever we get in this question by integrating it okay you guys know how to do that hopefully and then make sure that this is correct or not okay and then the last one i've made a separate video of uh, i made a separate video on it also but uh, i thought i'll just compile i'll just make one compilation so here We'll, we're going to learn how to use the table feature, which by the way is available in any calculator to sketch graphs, okay? Could be trigonometric, could be any sort of graphs, okay? But it's mainly useful for trigonometric, okay? So we press menu, we head over to where we see table. So that's at number nine, okay? We write down the function that we need to draw. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode because the question is in degree. So that's two cos three x, close the bracket, put a minus one at the end press equals to now it's gonna ask you for g of x skip that because this will uh this means the, this is basically if you want to make two graphs at once okay so where are we starting from we're starting from minus 90 so we write minus 90 as a starting value where are we ending we're ending at 90 so we write 90 as our ending value what's the step step is basically the intervals that we have in between so you can see there's a 30 degree interval every time so press equals to and there you go you know that at min at minus 90 it's equal to minus one so you know you can you can mark your values and then eventually plot them at minus 60 it's minus 3 at minus 30 it's minus 1 again at 0 it's 1 go down uh, 30 it's minus 1 when it's 60 it's minus 3 and when it's 90 it is minus 1 okay and then you can just join these points and make a nice and smooth cos curve out of it so yeah that's it uh that is what i wanted to cover in this video okay best of luck to you guys those of you who have their exam tomorrow and I'll be waiting to hear from you guys how your exam went. And yeah, that's it for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.